What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today, we're gonna to be talking about offshore winter crankbait fishing. We're gonna be breaking down the 10 factors you need to know to put a bunch of fish this winter in the boat on a crankbait. Let's get into it. The first and most important factor to take into account, regardless of what pattern you're fishing, is where you need to fish. If you're not putting your bait where the fish are, you're not going to catch any. And this spot right here is absolutely perfect to throw a deep diving crankbait in the wintertime. Here's an aerial view of the spot I'm fishing. As you can see, the bank slowly tapers from shallower water into deeper water, eventually dropping off into a creek channel. This creates a main lake flat, where the bottom of the lake is consistently between 10 to 15 feet of water all the way out to about 40 yards off of the shoreline. This is the perfect offshore area for winter bass. They can relate to the deep creek channel when you have post front conditions or when they want to be inactive. And what makes this spot even better is that up on top of this flat, there's a rocky spot in 10 to 15 feet of water where the bass can move up and feed on crawfish and bait fish. Here's a different look at this area using a Lake Master contour map. You can clearly see the flat area as well as that deeper creek channel. For the majority of the day, bait fish and bass will relate to that creek channel just like they were this morning. However, two to three times throughout the day, the bait fish will move up shallower to feed on that offshore rocky spot and the bass will follow them. This is the feeding window that you're looking for and if you can pull up on one of these spots at the right time, you can load the boat. I found this area by first identifying the main lake flat on the Lake Master contour map. I then took the side imaging on my fish finder and graphed over this area to identify the offshore rocky spot. You can clearly see it in this image, and you can also see a school of bait fish that's sitting over deeper water. To get a better view of these bait fish, I then re-graphed over the area with my down imaging. This allowed me to see the school of bait fish sitting just off the main lake flat over deeper water, which is the creek channel. You can also see the rocks up here in 10 to 15 feet of water, and there are two bass sitting right over the top of those rocks. This is exactly what I'm looking for when I'm trying to find a good offshore winter crankbait area. You can see those bass waiting to ambush those bait fish, and if I bring my crankbait right by them, they might think my bait is one of those shad, and I might be able to catch one. Let's see if it works. There's one right there, that's what I'm talking about. Got him off the spot. Feels like a decent one. I'm seeing some fish on the live scope down here. And they're moving around. Not a big one. That's a good one to start the day. Right here. Just a little guy, but this is what we've been looking for. Offshore cranking. I switched up to a couple different crankbaits. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the key is getting in these areas where you have that flatter spot off the bank, and you have those rocks out there, and you also have to have some shad presence. All those elements are key. Because I saw them on this spot, I knew that I could get some fish to bite. This is not the size we're looking for, but I guarantee you as we keep fishing, we should be able to get a few more good fish in the boat. Let's let this guy go. There we go. Awesome. First fish of the day, that's always a good clue. It tells us the area we're fishing is correct. Definitely need to be checking these offshore rocky spots, but there's a lot of other areas these fish can get on as well. We're gonna be checking several different areas throughout the day. Let me show you a few other options you might have when you're offshore winter cranking. Here's another great offshore crankbait area in the winter time. It doesn't look like much from the aerial view, but if we look underwater, you can see there's a nice point that runs out from this bank and then drops sharply into a creek channel. Even better, there's a nice rock pile on top of this rocky point. This is what I call a sneaky offshore area. If we take a look at the contour map, it's not obvious that there's a nice offshore rocky point sticking out from this bank. Not only does the bank look pretty flat, the contour lines don't necessarily form a defined point. However, you can see that there is a flat that runs off this bank and then drops off sharply in the end into the creek channel. That's what clued me in that there might be something more to the spot than what meets the eye on the map and on the bank. After graphing it with my side imaging, you can clearly see that nice rock pile as well as that change from shallower to deeper water. After graphing the spot with side imaging, 
I re-graphed it with my down imaging and saw a nice school of bait fish sitting off the end of this rocky point. It looked very similar to the last spot I just caught a fish on, so I decided to pull up and make a few casts here as well. Oh, got another one. Good one. Off this exact same rocky spot. Feels like a little bit better fish. Oh yeah, nice one. I love finding these hidden areas. There are guys who won't be fishing, throwing a crankbait on them. Oh man, these guys are just barely nipping it today. There we go, nice fish right there on the old crankbait. Solid fish, exactly what I'm looking for. Beauty right there, that's all I'm talking about. Nice chunky fish. That fish has probably not been caught recently because he's been hanging out a little bit further off the shore and you can see they're still pretty light. They're not, you know, these pale fish. They're living in that five to 14 feet of water and they're really fat. So there's definitely some crawfish or some shad there down there. I'm not seeing anything down his throat, but that is what I'm looking for when I'm offshore cranking. Again, it's not super offshore. It's just off the bank, maybe 20, 30 yards. But if you find the right areas, you can put them in the boat. Let's get this guy back in the lake. He's off. Let's get our cast in there. They're biting. Another great place to throw a deep diving crankbait in the wintertime is in offshore brush piles. I have one found right here on my live scope. What I'll do is take this deep diving crankbait and cast it over the top of that brush pile and actually bring it right over the top and through that brush. This is one of the best ways to catch a giant bass in the wintertime whenever those water temperatures are above 50 degrees. I do this a lot when I go down to Texas, like Sam Rayburn Lake and Toledo Bend. And if you want to try to catch a six to 10 pound bass in Texas in the winter, throwing a deep dive crankbait in brush piles is one of the best ways to do it. If you found these area descriptions helpful and want more information about where to fish in the winter time, head over to fishmoment.com, then go to our lake breakdowns page. Here we offer lake breakdowns, which give you 40 GPS waypoints you can download straight onto your fish finder. We also give you detailed area descriptions and some keys to fishing each lake. These lakes are broken down by season and we have a lot of the major lakes across the country for both the winter and the fall already done. We also offer personal lake breakdowns you can purchase for any lake across the country with the same 40 GPS waypoints. These spots are picked up by professional angler Randy Blockett and are a great way to get a head start on your winter fishing. Next, let's talk about the best lake conditions to fish a deep dive and crankbait offshore in the winter time. This pattern usually works best when the water visibility is between one and three feet. If you have water visibility that's less than a foot, a lot of times those bass won't live that far off the bank even in the winter, and you can find bass in less than eight feet of water. Therefore, you don't really need to use a deep diving crankbait. You can just use a shallow diver or a medium diver to catch those fish. On the flip side, when water visibilities are above three feet in the winter time, bass will usually be living deeper offshore than you can reach with your standard deep dive and crankbait. In general, I can fish a crankbait down effectively to the 20 to 25 foot range. However, when water visibilities are above three feet, a lot of the bass offshore will be positioning in 30 to 50 feet of water, which means you can't reach them effectively with a deep dive and crankbait, and there's other baits you can target them with more effectively, like a blade bait, an Alabama rig, a swim bait, a football jig, and I'll get into all these other techniques in a separate video. But for this deep dive and crankbait pattern in the wintertime, it's always best to look for water visibilities between one and three feet. In terms of water level, I've found that it doesn't have that big of an impact on the offshore wintertime crankbait bite. I've caught them really well when lakes are drawn down 5 to 10 feet in the winter, and also when they're 10 feet high. The most important thing is finding those areas in the 8 to 20 foot zone that have bait fish and good cover, regardless of the water level. Next, let's talk about the best water temperatures for fishing a deep diving crankbait in the winter. 
The key window for this wintertime offshore crankbait bite is whenever the water temperatures are between 48 and 58 degrees. There's something about that water temperature range that causes these fish to eat a crankbait really well. When you get water temperatures below 48 degrees, a lot of times you can catch them better on an Alabama rig or a jerkbait, but you can still catch some fish on a flat side crankbait all the way down to 40 degree water temperatures. And then after the water temperatures get above 58 degrees, usually those fish are gonna be spawning in the spring or they're going to be on a top water lure or a spinner bait in the late fall so really the key window to look for is that 48 to 58 degree water whenever that window is happening you need to be throwing a deep diving crankbait next let's talk about the different types of deep diving crankbaits i fish in the winter time for me a deep diving crankbait is any crankbait that dives 12 feet or deeper and my go-to is the spro rock crawler 55. This isn't your traditional deep diving crankbait, and most people would think of this as a medium diving crankbait. However, on the box, it's rated to dive 9 to 14 feet deep. And I'm able to get this bait down that 12 to 15 foot strike zone on almost every single cast with a few key adjustments. The first is that I'm going to upgrade the stock treble hooks on this bait to number five Gamakatsu round bend hooks. They're just a little bit heavier than the stock hooks that come on this bait, which helps me get about an extra six inches to a foot of depth. Not a big change, but the key thing that I do to get this bait all the way down that 12 to 15 foot range in almost every cast is using lighter line than what most people use. In general, I'm using eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon line on this Spro Rock Crawler. And that lighter line is going to help this bait get much deeper than throwing it on, let's say, 12 pound monofilament, which is what I usually throw my crankbaits on. One challenge with that light line though is that because I'm fishing this bait around heavy rocks most of the time, there's a pretty good chance that I'll break off if I don't retie often. And also I'm not using the right equipment. The rod I throw with this bait on is crucial to the setup. And it's a seven foot medium moderate action Falcon Buku bait casting rod. The moderate action is key because it means this rod has a very bendy tip. I mean, it basically bends halfway through the rod and that's going to allow that rod to absorb a lot of the shock from fish pulling and from me pulling it against the rocks and you'll break off a lot less often and it allows me to use that lighter line. Also by using that moderate action rod, you don't, have, you don't run as much of a risk of pulling these small treble hooks out of the fish's mouth. The best thing about this rod is it's only $99 you can get at Academy or Bass Pro Shop, pretty much anywhere that sells fishing equipment and is an awesome crankbait rod for these smaller, lighter crankbaits with the small hooks. And I'm gonna be pairing that up with a Abu Garcia Black Max Reel, six four to one. I've thrown this bait on a five four to one in the past, but what I find is that I can't get quite as much depth with that five four to one because I can't reel it fast enough to initiate the dive of this crankbait. The key to getting this bait deep is right when that bait hits the water, I'm gonna burn my reel handle 10 to 15 times to get it down to its maximum depth as fast as you can. And by reeling it faster, it dives down more and gets deeper faster. If you're using a 5 4 to 1 reel like I use on the rest of my crankbaits I'm about to show you, you can't get the maximum depth out of this bait. And that means because I'm using a little bit faster reel, I'm gonna reel it just a little bit slower than the other crankbaits that I'm gonna be showing you. I'll get in the retrieve here in just a minute. In terms of color with this bait, my go-to is the red craw color. It has a translucent body, and that's great whenever you're fishing in water clarities between two to three feet of visibility. However, if I'm fishing in dirtier water, let's say six inches to a foot and a half visibility, I like to go to this burnt orange color. It has a really bright bottom, and the fish seem to key on it a little bit better than this translucent color in that dirtier water. The next deep diving crankbait I throw is the Strike King 5XD. This is a more traditional deep diving crankbait body, and it dives actually the exact same depth as that rock crawler on the setup I use. It dives 13 to 15 feet deep. And the reason I throw this bait as opposed to the rock crawler is because it has a longer, wider bill. Whenever I'm fishing around really heavy cover, like a brush pile, really thick rocks or grass, that bigger bill will deflect the cover and I'll get hung up a lot less with this bait than the rock crawler. I still go to the rock crawler first, but if I'm getting hung up a lot, I'll pull out the 5XD. For the setup on this bait, I throw it with 12 pound monofilament line. I could go down to a 10 pound fluorocarbon to get this bait deeper, but because I'm fishing around heavier cover, I want a little bit stronger line and I like that monofilament because I don't have as many breakoff issues as I do with fluoro when I'm fishing around rock and wood. 
And then for my rod and reel, I throw a seven foot six medium heavy action Veritas winch crankbait rod. It's a $119 rod and it has that same moderate bend that the Falcon Buku did earlier. Bends almost halfway down the rod. It's a crankbait style rod. And I like that little bit longer rod with this bait because it allows me to cast it just a little bit further. And this bait is a little bit heavier than that rock crawler. So it'll handle, uh, or this rod can handle this bait and launch it just a little bit further. And then for the reel on this bait, I throw a 5 4 to 1 Abu Garcia Black Max winch reel. It's a $59 reel at Walmart. And I like the 5 4 to run with this deep diving crankbait because I can reel it at a medium to medium fast pace and feel like I'm actually working the bait quickly, but it doesn't move all that far because that reel has a slower ratio. It moves less line per second. And usually I'm not worried about getting this bait down to maximum depth because it's rated to go 15 plus feet. So I don't need that 6 4 to 1 to get the extra depth out of it. My main consideration with this bait is making sure it's not going to break off after I hook a fish in a brush pile or something like that. So I'll go to heavier line, go to a little bit longer rod, and that's my setup if I'm fishing around heavier cover in the winter offshore. The next crankbait I throw a lot is the Spro Little John DD. This crankbait dives a lot deeper than the Rock Crawler and the 5XD, and I can usually get it down to the 18 to 20 foot zone pretty consistently. Whenever those fish are setting up a little bit deeper, whether it's a clear water lake or you just have a cold front to push the fish deeper, I'll go to this Little John DD. The reason I like this bait is because it has flat sides to it, which gives it a little bit tighter wobble than like a striking 6XD or a lot of your traditional big deep diving plugs. This is great when that water temperature is colder because you don't want a ton of side to side action, though this bait still does have a nice roll and wobble to it. The bill is also really long, which helps me deflect off brush piles and rock piles, just like that 5XD. And I actually use the exact same setup for this crankbait as I do on the 5XD. 12 pound monofilament. Sometimes I go down to 10 pound if I want to get this bait really deep in that 20 foot range. I throw it with the Black Max winch reel and a seven foot six Abu Garcia winch Veritas crankbait rod. So that is my setup for the deep diver when I want to get just a little bit deeper. Two more baits I throw a lot offshore in the winter time, especially when the water temperature dips below the 50 degree mark, are the Strike King KVD 1.5 flat side crankbait and the Mega Bass Diving Flat Slap. Both these crankbaits are flat side crankbaits and they dive in that 8 to 12 foot range, especially if I'm throwing them on 8 pound test. The reason I throw these baits is because as that water temperature approaches 48 degrees, even 47 degrees, a lot of fish will start nipping at the wider wobbling rock crawler and I won't get nearly as many bites. So I'll switch to that flat side bait and it'll help me put more fish in the boat. Now, the reason I throw both these baits is because this KV 1.5 flat kind of casts like a potato chip, but it catches a lot of really good fish. And if you have any sort of wind on the day, this bait is really tough to cast. Therefore, I'll go to the Mega Bass flat diving flat slap, which basically has the exact same profile, dives the same depth, but it's tough to throw a $19 crankbait all day long in rocks and brush and stuff like that when you can avoid it. So I'll go to the KVD 1.5 flat whenever I can, whenever I can manage to cast it. But on days when it's too windy or I don't feel like I'm getting enough casting distance, I'll go to the flat slap. If you had to pick one, obviously just get the Mega Bass flat slap. They both catch fish equally well. I actually see to catch fish a little bit better on the flat slap. And if I was fishing a tournament, I would go to this bait. But if you're price sensitive and are worried about throwing 19 $19 crankbait in rocks and brush, the KVD 1.5 flat will get the job done, except for when it's windy. In terms of the equipment I'm throwing this bait on, I use the exact same style of rod as I was throwing the rock crawler on. A seven foot, medium moderate. This is an old Quantum Tour Edition rod, but it's the exact same as that Falcon Buku, basically. And I actually throw these baits on a five four to one gear ratio reel as opposed to the six four to one because I want to fish that bait a little bit slower as that water temperature cools off. I'll also be throwing anywhere from eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon again to get the maximum depth out of these baits, get them down that eight to 12 foot range consistently. And whenever I see those water temperatures dropping, I'll pull out one of these two baits and put the herd on them.
Another factor to consider is your retrieve speed with these deep diving crankbaits in the winter. There's a big misconception that you need to reel these crankbaits slow because the water temperatures are cold. However, I find that when I'm fishing deep diving crankbaits in that 48 to 58 degree water range, the fish are still pretty aggressive and you can reel these baits pretty quick and still get a lot of bites. I'm not crawling my bait or reeling it at a snail's pace. I'm definitely not reeling it as fast as I am in the summertime. In the summer, I'll cast that crankbait out there. I'm absolutely just gonna burn that crankbait back in as fast as I can. This is definitely too fast for wintertime crankbait fishing, but I'm not gonna reel it super slow either. I like to reel my crankbaits at a medium to medium fast clip, but this is with a five four to one bait casting reel. This is an Abu Garcia winch five four to one reel. So I am using a slightly slower reel than most guys will be throwing. So my medium to medium fast retrieve is going to move that bait slower than guys who are throwing it on a six four to one or seven to one gear ratio reel. But with that five four to one, this is the pace I like to keep with that crankbait. A pretty good pace, not super fast, but not super slow. It seems to generate a lot of bites for me. And I don't really slow down my crankbait retrieve to a snail's pace until that water temperature dips below 48 degrees. Let's quickly talk about boat positioning when you're fishing offshore in the wintertime with a crankbait. In general, I like to keep my boat pretty close to where the first drop off off the bank is. If you take a look at this first image, my boat is right on the edge of this flat before it drops in that creek channel. The reason for this is because I need to get that crankbait into the strike zone, but because of a crankbait's nature, you're not actually going to be hitting the bottom until about a third of the way through the retrieve on any of these deep diving crankbaits. Therefore, if you stay too far away from these offshore areas and put your boat out in the creek channel, you're not going to be getting your bait down into the strike zone for very long, maybe only for five to 10 seconds. Therefore, moving closer to these offshore areas and getting right on the edge of the drop off will allow you to get that bait down on that rocky spot or on the lip of that ledge where those fish are sitting and put a lot more fish in the boat. Now, obviously you don't have to throw a crankbait all day and I'm usually mixing up multiple baits on these offshore areas. My number one go-to is the Fish the Moment Offshore Jig by Jewel Baits. This is a great follow-up bait to that crankbait, especially if you think those fish are lethargic and not biting, but still in the area. I'll basically just take this jig and throw it in the exact same spots I'm fishing that crankbait. You can also get a little bit deeper. So if I think those fish have pulled off the drop in that 20 to 25 foot range, you can sometimes pick up a few extra fish with the football jig. One thing I haven't talked about yet are the best weather conditions for this pattern. In general, I like overcast cloudy days for this crankbait bite. I don't need a ton of wind, maybe three to five miles an hour, but usually the cloud cover is going to cause these fish to roam a little bit more in these offshore areas and the wind will get them a little bit active. And you can use a crankbait as a search tool to locate those fish that are roaming around on these structure spots. Now, if we got a bright bluebird sky day with no wind, then that football jig I showed you earlier is going to be my go-to bait. However, because we have the conditions that we're presented with today, this crankbait is the best tool for the job. One of the most overlooked factors of wintertime bass fishing is timing. Usually, bass aren't going to be eating a crankbait all day long in the winter. Instead, there's going to be one to two feeding windows that you need to capitalize on if you're going to catch fish on a crankbait. What I've found is that there's usually two really good feeding windows throughout the day. The first is during the first two hours of the morning. For whatever reason, the bait fish seem to get really active during this time in the winter, even if air temperatures are in the 20s. And you can usually catch multiple fish off of these offshore areas before anyone else even gets to the lake. The next feeding window is usually between 1 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. For whatever reason, bait fish seem to rise up shallower in the afternoon during the winter, whether that's because the surface temperature warms up from the sun, or you just have warmer temperatures throughout the day, even when it's cloudy. This means that a lot of the bait fish are going to be moving up and feeding on these offshore rocky spots in 10 to 15 feet of water, perfectly in range for that deep diving crankbait. This actually played out on this fishing day. I started out in the main lake flat in the morning and caught one small fish, but then I returned later in the afternoon around 2 o'clock and you'll see what happens. There he is. Got him. Good one. Nice fish. They're all over this spot right here. Found a little wad of them. All these fish are barely getting that crankbait though. Don't know why. 
It's the importance of having the right equipment. We'll talk about that here in a second. Having the limber rod and the right hooks on this bait. But these are good fish. A lot of times I just kind of work them around the circle, especially in the cold weather. I want to keep them coming one direction. And then bring them over to you. Grab them in the mouth and boom. There we go. Nice fish right there. Got them on the crankbait again. Really far off this bank. Fishing for fish that most guys are going to miss. This is kind of a pseudo offshore pattern like I mentioned. And when you can hit it right, you're going to catch some studs some good fish. I mean, this isn't a giant, but this is the third fish I've caught and they've all been really good quality fish. Beautiful bass right there. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get this beautiful fish back in the lake. There we go. One last thing I want to talk about is how to incorporate this pattern in a tournament strategy. Most of the time when I am offshore crankbait fishing in the winter, I only have two or three good spots to fish. And if you're fortunate and all three fire, you can most of the time catch a limit doing that. But sometimes you may only get one or two keepers, maybe three keepers off this pattern in a given fishing day. Now, assuming you don't have that many spots, you're going to have to start mixing in some other patterns. And some of my go-tos are fishing down some of these steeper rocky banks with the exact same crankbait. And while a lot of guys are doing this, if you can hit some banks that have less pressure on them, you can usually pick up a few keepers. And the way I think about it from a tournament perspective is that the steep rocky banks like the one in front of me here are the community holes, areas that a lot of guys are going to be fishing. And the offshore areas that I showed you earlier are going to be the hidden areas that receive a lot less pressure. And if I can get two fish off of these community holes, these obvious 45 degree chunk rock banks, and then get three fish off of my offshore rocky spots, I'm going to have a really good tournament. So it's all about blending in this technique into a fishing day and not relying on it as your sole technique. And that's how you're going to be successful with this pattern in a tournament. That's it for this video, guys. If you made it all the way to the end, then you're definitely a bass fishing nerd just like me. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Also, if you really enjoyed it, we'd appreciate if you left a like down below. It helps us out with the YouTube algorithm and helps get this content out to more people. Thanks again for checking out the video. We'll see y'all next one.